Welcome to Turner Cross Football Club. Come on the city. What a beautiful venue for a game of football. From <laughs> Wait till you see this view. When that shed in down there gets quiet, it's like nothing else. Location football have gone international. We can't wait for this one. We have just landed in the beautiful city of Cork. We are here to go behind the scenes at Cork City versus Stoke City in a mid-season friendly. It's a warm one today, so bring your sun cream lavers because this video is going to be a scorcher. So first up, we've got the English market on Prince's Street. They've got a load of delights for you. Although the smell of fish does hit you when you head in. You can get yourself a nice little two pack t-shirt to take home with you. But my personal favorite, the white chocolate raspberry tartlet. If you like your medieval buildings, you will absolutely love Elizabeth Fort. It's free to enter. So what have you got to lose? Hopefully not your head. And this last one is a must for traveling football fans. The corner flag. Wait till you see this view. Here we are in the center circle of Turner's Cross Stadium. What a beautiful venue for a game of football. We are expecting a decent turnout tonight. Stoke have traveled well. They're in the city center as we speak, enjoying a little slurp or two. But who will come out on top? Will it be the Rebel Army or the Potters? Kickoff is a few hours away, so we're gonna have a little moochie around. The total capacity here is just over seven and a half thousand, all of which are seated. Up first, we have the Donny Ford stand, which is where you'll find our family enclosure. Opposite that, we have the Derry Nan Road stand, where the manager's dugouts are. Our travelling away fans are located in the St Anne's end, tucked away nicely in the corner, finishing up in the shed end, notably Block T. This is where you'll find all the noisy Rebel Army, and I can't wait to get amongst it. Cork City play in the first division of the League of Ireland. Their season started in February and doesn't finish until October. Not only are the lads in tip-top condition, but they are top of the first division and looking to gain promotion back to the Premier Division, a title they've won three times. Quick five facts. The club have featured over 60 times in multiple European competitions. They faced the likes of Legia Warsaw, Slavia Prague, and even Bayern Munich. Quick five facts. The trophy cabinet is stacked with silverware as well. It has a Premier Division title and FAI Cup double, which they won in 2017. New balls, please. Quick five facts. The club is owned by a supporters trust known as the Friends of the Rebel Army Society. This came into existence in 2008 and still in place today. Stoke City coaching staff said I could have one go at the crossbar challenge. Lavers, do you back me? No. No. What are you on about? I just got absolutely soaked by the sprinklers, but I found myself in the home dugout. Let me tell you about the gaffer then. His name is Colin Healy. He was appointed back in December 2020. He's also made over 150 appearances for the club, as well as representing Ireland at international level. And if you go in the sponsor lounge, there's a lovely caricature of him. As we are in the dugout, it's time for another manager cliche, and we are keeping it Ireland-based. Can you tell us which gaffer said this? People say just to go with the flow, but do you know what goes with the flow? Dead fish. As always, put your answers in the comments section below. I'm going to go put on some Factor 50 because it's absolutely Roastman Pat. They've had a few crests over the years, each one in keeping with the cork coat of arms. And they've done exactly that with the current design. They've got the ship and the two towers that once guarded the port of cork. Now, they've also introduced the traditional green colour and re-established when the club were formed in 1984. Remember the Corner Flag Pub? Proper kicking off now. This is the swanky new sponsors lounge, fully kitted out for all the VIPs attending match days. There's also some familiar faces. Remember I said the gaffer had a caricature? Well, there it is. And also, David Myler, who is a little bit sun-kissed. 
Right, the tunes are pumping in the away dressing room, but we are making our way out onto the hollow turf at Turner's Cross. We have got the club's crest as you make your way out onto the pitch, up a pretty steep hill to be fair, and there she is. This is the head groundsman, Sean. Your pitch is in absolutely impeccable condition. How much preparation has gone into it? Well, I'm here since 10 o'clock this morning, haven't I? Caught it, lined it, and then, as you can see, I'm off tonight tomorrow. How long does it take you to cut the pitch? It's two hours. Does the gaffer want you to cut it in a certain way, or does he leave yeah. that to you? Uh, he, he decides, and when he decides, I do. And what is it that he's decided for you to do today? Diamonds. He wanted the diamonds effect ah. on it. Is that just to look pretty? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. But normally for uh, the league games, I normally have it the other, the opposite way. The lines going across like the Premiership. I'm the match referee for today. Uh, my name is Ray Matthews. Kevin O'Sullivan, fourth official. And Owen Herrick, assistant referee. Alan Lynch, assistant referee. Killers. <laughs> so Marty <laughs> told me. <laughs> Lincoln Lawyer. Kraken. Oh, Stranger Things, yeah. Have you finished it? No. Don't spoil anything. Favourite character? Character has to be the kid. The curly hair, what's his name? Ray. Ray. <laughs> Welcome to Top of the Charts. We have a new entry from Cork. We are the first Cork City Brigade, Cork City FC Ultra Group. Welcome to Corners Cross Football Club. Come on the city. Cork City FC! That was Cork City FC by Cork City Ultras. My name is Philip Lamb, commentating with Cork City Football Club. Colm O'Sullivan, Cork City FC commentator. How much preparation goes into each game? Usually we'd be here, we'd meet here about an hour beforehand. We'd have separate notes. He'd, he'd share his notes, I'd share mine, and that's basically it. And it all depends on the opposition as well and how, how knowledgeable you are of the opposition, I suppose, doesn't it? Stoke would have been a club we'd have, I suppose, known a lot about a couple of years ago. Familiar with the manager, Michael O'Neill, as well, obviously, because he, he was League of Ireland, the Shamrock Rovers, and won the league here a couple of times as well. And what's the chemistry like with you two on air? I hate him. That's <laughs> <laughs> always good. It's always a good laugh. Good crack. I mean, we, we, we do a serious commentary on the game, but I mean, you have a bit of banter as well along the way. Bit of a laugh, bit of crack, few jokes, and uh, Phil is always able to throw in a little smart comment as well, aren't you? We, we wanted, we wanted to check what, what was it like on bar. We don't have bar, <laughs> you know. So, and what makes Cork City unique? It's, it's a family kind of an atmosphere here. Everyone gets on with everyone. In Cork, we think we're the capital of Ireland. We're not, <laughs> you know. And everyone in Cork loves football, and the atmosphere is just cracking. I mean, when that shed in down there gets going, it's, it's like nothing else, isn't it? Here are today's kits. Scott is tall enough to be a goalkeeper, but his hand-eye coordination is terrible. He's modelling the yellow long-sleeve jersey of Cork City's number one. Hi, how are you? I am uh, Richie Holland, assistant manager of Cork City Football Club. The lads are just starting their warm-up here now, just before a friendly against Stoke. And what they're doing at the moment, they've done a little bit of uh, gentle warm-up and they're going to go into bands, come in and do a bit of um, football then in terms of passing drills, substitutes and do uh, rondo, then we'll go into a possession with the starting 11, finish with a bit of shooting. What are you expecting from your boys today? A uh, good workout. We're halfway through our season and we've got some big matches coming up in our league, so it's a great game for us, you know, obviously against a high quality team and that, you know, so for us really it's about uh, getting the minutes into our, into our legs again for a big game next week. And if there was one manager you could work with, who would it be? Jurgen Klopp. I just think the culture he builds within, uh, within teams and that, you know, and how explosive his teams are. Uh, I love watching him play and that, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, he'd definitely be one for me. I think his man management skills are brilliant, you know.
some on my holidays, I thought I'd mix things up. I've gone for a burger. We've got the single patty today, bit of ketchup, chopped up onion. It was the last one they had, so they did give it to me for free, so thank you very much. Let's give it a taste. Gorgeous. Scrummy. Gluttonous. And the two towers which once 